time, but I'm speaking on behalf of the, from the context of my role with the Interaction um, Council, which uh, focuses particularly on uh, global security challenges of our time. Um, and I've particularly had the um, great honour to lead on a number of different areas, including addressing climate change and uh, the current pandemic. Um, and just really to reflect on um, the crisis that we're currently in with the, the pandemic um, and essentially to argue that this was a disaster waiting to happen. We knew that this was high on the risk register. If we look at the World um, Economic Forum uh, Global Risks Report, the if you can see it, the red dot um, that's highest in terms of impact and likelihood um, it has been uh, infectious diseases and pandemics and that's been there for several years um, and but our response has been inadequate we've uh, underfunded our uh, preparedness and public health systems to address um, uh, pandemics even though we knew that one was going to come um, and uh, you know even um, now only 70 countries have national plans uh, to address um, uh, health security challenges. So um, I think also I just want to kind of uh, reflect some of the comments uh, raised earlier as well. Essentially we, we see a global crisis in leadership um, and we've relied on specific leaders to pull us out of this pandemic. Uh, so for example Winston Churchill managed to sort of help garner the kind of um, leadership required, for example, in the Second World War, one could argue. Um, but actually, that's a really high risk strategy to rely on the right leader coming at the right time with the right skills. Um, and actually, in reality, what happens in terms of human reactions and how we're wired in terms of dealing with stress, um, when we're in a panicky situation, we panic. And that's what we've seen unfolding multiple times uh, with our political leaders and also a lot of our public health um, and sort of wider UN multilateral leadership. Um, people have gone into a stress mode, into a panic mode. They've denied, ignored, um, reacted very um, without sort of strategically planning or thinking through uh, the consequences. Um, and you can see what a mess that's got us into. We're two years virtually into the pandemic and we're really nowhere um, to, 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 to leave this place. Um, the countries that have done well essentially have um, been prepared and it's partly because they've actually uh, experienced similar situations. They, got, they had good preparedness plans and they had uh, strong political leadership that was decisive and interestingly put people first rather than the economy first. So I'd, this slide's just really to highlight the perspective of uh, our global security challenges, um, especially from the perspective of heads of government. Um, they've tended to focus back global security around wars and conflict, but actually today we're facing modern um, and multiple challenges, uh, including um, the climate crisis and pandemics. And actually we need leaders that are able to increasingly deal with emergencies and uh, um, crises of this sort. Um, and this is just very quickly to say a, a, um, a global security framework that um, I've prepared uh, with the Interaction Council uh, we met uh, last week and uh, discuss this and and um, uh, Bertie Ahern, the chair of the uh, Interaction Council uh, meeting um, and of the Interaction, Interaction Council really highlighted as well the importance of uh, developing a global strategy or some sort of global response. At the moment we're focused mostly on vaccines, one part of a response that's needed and actually when we're thinking about global leadership and where the gaps are, we, we actually need some sort of plan or way forward through the through this pandemic. Um, but this framework outlines uh, potentially um, the infrastructure that's needed going forward in the future um, so that we're able to uh, respond to future uh, things like health or uh, planetary emergencies, including the climate emergency. And it's really thinking about the infrastructure, um, for example, uh, of the Security Council, of our UN uh, infrastructure, to actually be able to 
uh, address these sorts of challenges. And I'd particularly like to argue going forward as well, and I'm sorry I won't be able to join you for the rest of the discussion, that we need to um, strengthen our leaders and our young leaders for the future, but we also need to strengthen our governance structures and the infrastructure, um, the architecture of leader, leadership, um, so that we actually create systems that don't allow the, the sort of catastrophic failures that we're experiencing now. So, um, and then I just sort of propose here um, something about how we can think about leadership uh, uh, systems um, to for education to create the sort of leaders that we need for the future, but also the sort of leadership systems as well. Um, so that in terms of the infrastructure, we need strong governance, uh, whether it's policy, legislation, the infrastructure at uh, international and national levels, um, right down to communities and education systems. Um, and really just to argue as well, the case of um, we need to combine uh, science with art. So I've got sort of knowledge and advocacy here. And I think um, having been involved at the coalface uh, in terms of the pandemic response, there's a real gap between uh, translating science in a way that uh, policymakers, politicians and the general public understand. And that is a similar crisis, I think, or a, a, a gap um, in terms of that knowledge translation um, and the ability to give narrative for the climate crisis as well. So I'd really want to uh, emphasize that aspect. Um, and then um, the other aspect as well is in the center, I've got here about the sort of essentially the um, sustainable development goal kind of areas in terms of people, peace, prosperity, but particularly with the climate crisis and the priority that that represents for our very own existence, we need to put the planet much more centrally in terms of decision making and decision making processes going forward um, and align our education systems to help enable to deliver the sustainable development goals. So capacity, obviously, in terms of education systems, but also call to for how we train leaders to deal with emergencies and strengthen resilience. And I'm just moving to the last slide uh, to give some examples from the work that I did in Commonwealth. So this um, on the left-hand side is a Commonwealth curriculum framework that covered the 17 SDGs across the life course to create a multi-sector um, life course perspective about essentially aligning um, and modernizing our education systems uh, to actually enable us to deliver the sustainable development goals, which again uh, resonates with the comment earlier about actually we need to think about what do we want education to produce in the future, uh, along with leaders. Um, and then on the right hand side, just to highlight uh, opportunities through um, a digital platform for planet, place and people that um, I, uh, I'm um, taking forward with a group of uh, digital fellows in the Commonwealth Centre uh, for digital health and that's a real opportunity to how we can really scale up education as a common good as well so i'll stop now and just say a big thank you 